Today's program description, top six benefits of robotics and deductions is as follows. Robotics process automation is now widely used across various industries to solve many problems timely and effectively. In this session, you will learn about the top six, six benefits of using robotics in the area of customer deductions and chargebacks, which is a complicated problem since it requires interaction between two or three business partners and three or more departments. Presenting today's program is Rohit Patel, Credit and Collections Consultant at iNimbus. Rohit Patel has extensive experience in the credit and collections arena with long tenures leading the credit and collection teams at Sony Computer Entertainment America, Warner Brothers, Home Entertainment, and ResMed. At these companies, Rohit's expertise includes the development of strategic plans that led to improved financial operating results and successful global ERP implementations, as well as other process and system enhancements that led to increased efficiencies. Rohit believes that technology will play a critical role in the future of credit and collections and is always looking for cutting edge technology that disturbs the norm. Rohit has a degree from England, enjoys traveling and spending time with family. So without further ado, I am pleased to turn the program over to Rohit. Thank you, Caitlin. I appreciate it. And thanks for uh, everybody joining uh, today's uh, webinar. Uh, as I get into it, give me one second, make sure. Okay, here we go. Um, unfortunately, Sridhar cannot join us today. And I'll do my best to walk you through the material um, as it relates to uh, robots and, and technology there. The agenda for today, uh, the deductions and chargebacks, the problem itself, we'll make a couple of statements for that, about that. What are robots, also known as bots? Then we'll go into the six benefits uh, of robots in deductions and chargebacks. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about bots before, but we're going to specifically talk to the benefits for chargebacks and then some next steps. Going right into it, the problem. I'm sure many of you have seen this, but this is some of the common statements that we've seen that your teams are stuck under a huge, never ending piles of chargebacks and deductions. I've seen this in uh, several companies that I've worked for, uh, or should I say worked at. Um, and the first thing is, you know, chargebacks and deductions can get simply out of control. Um, often teams and companies are behind months, if not uh, several quarters. And sometimes it's difficult to look at that problem. It's not the best uh, uh, job that everyone wants to do. People don't go to school for doing this, and some of them really hate to see that volume of chargebacks that come through. And often, you'll see some of the same data that is pulled out of uh, ERP systems that need to get populated into, say, Excel spreadsheets and then back into vendor retailers, so there's a lot of typing and errors can occur uh, along, those, along that process. Now, keeping up with ever-changing retail portals, I'm sure companies uh, that are on this call have seen uh, more and more retailers uh, requesting that you use their portals. Hence, doing the work of their payables department uh, has been pushed to um, their suppliers. Last but not least, you know, hiring uh, seasonal temps takes away from actually focusing on the issues um, at hand as well. Sound familiar? I'm sure it does uh, with a lot of uh, the companies that are on call today. Let's be brutally honest, right? Can you beat them at their own game? The likes of Amazon, Costco, anyone on here, you know, even FedEx, UPS, uh, as they have chargebacks uh, for misshipments, lost shipments, and so forth, uh, the whole spectrum of chargebacks. Um, but you'll start to see um, during the presentation, uh, where I talk about uh, the technology that they have. And the simple truth is you can't without bots. Uh, in the world of chargebacks, companies like Amazon have more tech strategy, time, and money than you will ever be budgeted or even desire to have. Um, key thing to note, most of the companies uh, on this call are in the business to make product sell it through the distribution channels, not necessarily 
spend time and money on tech strategies. There's throwing manpower at the problem work. Um, in my experience, uh, I did try this before technology that was out there. Uh, when I inherited a similar problem at Warner Brothers, uh, we had probably 100 staff and about 20, 30 temps. And uh, we could never keep up with the volumes. You know, we would have uh, the team work on a specific period. Once they would go through that problem, the next period, would, the you know, problems would pile up as well. So, um, no, we realized some, back, some years back that chargebacks and deductions were uh, unbeatable with existing solutions. So not only manpower, but also solutions that are out there. Um, now, due to their size and technology, especially Amazons of the world, um, you've seen Walmart getting into this as well. They're getting into that tech space. Um, the money that they spend definitely outweigh uh, what any uh, supplier company could do to keep up with the deductions. They use automation and at a ruthless ability to take every single charge back. Most of you have to sign these detailed uh, manuals from them, the vendor manuals. Um, there's a lot of fine print in there and they will take every single penny that they can. It's a constant battle. You see the little image on the side. You've got uh, Optimus Prime against the Megatrons of the world uh, in Transformers, right? So it's a, it's a battle between them putting their technology and you trying to either put manpower or other solutions in there, um, but it is a constant battle. What are robots? Some of you on the call may or may not know this, but this is Will and the robot from Lost in Space, right? So many years ago, robots uh, were introduced into society, but uh, more recently, uh, you have this new process, robotic process automation, RPA. Now, robots basically automate business processes and they replicate the human uh, actions that are performed, right? Um, so it's basically a software, robots are combined with AI uh, behind the scenes that basically do the work uh, of your teams. Now, the result is business process automation technology done um, at a more accurate basis and more timely, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a little while. Now, you're probably wondering, IT, CEOs, you know, what, what, is, what is their take on this? I'm just simply going to read this quote from May 18th, earlier this year. Software that automates basic tasks is catching hold in large enterprises where CIOs are seeking to inject greater efficiency into business processes called RPA, Robotic Process Automation. The technology enables IT departments to use a piece of software called a robot uh, to perform routine tasks. Um, this was introduced initially uh, in the accounting space and the accounts payable area. Those processes are repeatable and often don't change. And now we're seeing uh, companies like iNimbus moving into the chargeback and deduction space. Um, but it did start off in the payables department. And a lot of outsourcing companies are actually moving towards uh, RPA to help uh, with their ROI. Robots level the playing field. Uh, what I'm going to be talking about today are bots that basically exist to solve one problem, is to resolve chargebacks um, and disputes, you know, at lightning speeds uh, and in a much timely manner that will keep your chargebacks as current um, as possible. Technology um, is not just a bigger stick, right? It's a totally different way of dealing with deductions and chargebacks. Uh, bots will allow you to fight fire with fire and bring your chargebacks deductions backlog down to zero and keep them uh, consistent as much as possible. So again, point here is fighting 
technology with technology. Um, if you try to find technology with resources and additional software, you're not going to be able to keep up uh, with the investments that the Amazons and the Walmarts of the world do. So the reason I think everybody signed up for this was the six benefits of using bots in deductions and chargebacks. Number one is scalability. Now, seasonality, we'll, we'll get into that in a second, but the enemy is the volume of transactions, right? They increase, they decrease transaction chargebacks that may cause you to have resources um, higher from time to time. Um, so costs can go up uh, through hiring those resources. And most CEOs and CFOs realize that that extra money spent on temp resources is important because they'll be able to uh, get their ROI on every penny that's collected back uh, on outstanding chargebacks. The enemy of scaling, right? So new softwares are out there and systems are out there. Often you will need to put in a big capital budget. Uh, it'll take months or years uh, to implement. And by the time you're comfortable uh, with that software, uh, you know, there's a new version that's going to be out there. Um, and companies often, you know, use thresholds to, to compete with the volume of deductions. Now, you'll be surprised, not maybe you are surprised or not surprised to realize that uh, retailers are out there constantly pinging or challenging your system to see what that threshold, auto threshold write off limit may be. And often they will go ahead and continue to take chargebacks. Like I mentioned earlier on, I've seen companies that are dealing with penny chargebacks. It's not worth the resource or the time and effort to do that. However, with bots, that's a different story. Robots scale easily for free uh, to truly solve the problem, right? Process must be simplified to a level where it can go from zero to a million and then from a million to zero without any effort. Very difficult to do with resources um, and don't have to worry about threshold limits or auto write-offs. With bots, once that process is identified and the bots are able to transact uh, back and forth, build the information, you can scale uh, seasonally uh, up and down quite efficiently. Now, bots are easy to implement, right? So bots uh, are easily taught and trained uh, on your processes. It doesn't have to be uh, the same standard process. Bots can uh, figure out a, a return shortage from a, uh, a regular shortage and, and go through that process. Uh, so they're uh, easily taught on processes. I mentioned this earlier on, they're scalable uh, to volume uh, up and down at just at the push of a button. Uh, to keep up with those transactions. Um, they're constantly um, out there. They don't sleep, they don't take lunch breaks. So, you know, um, they're constantly working for you. Um, a month or two to implement, not nine months to a year. And uh, you have your own little bot army at your fingerprints right across the uh, that. And I'll share some data with you as it relates to the equivalent of a regular FTE to the number of bots you can uh, potentially uh, have on your team. Number two, fragmentation, right? Often solving chargebacks and deductions, it feels like it takes a village to go ahead and take care of those deductions. Um, who is involved? Accounting is involved, logistics, sales, the shippers, retailers, IT, everyone needs to get involved with chargebacks to really truly solve the problem. Now, depending upon your organization, uh, the silos can nearly be, uh, be insurmountable, right? So each one of the ones I just mentioned could probably have their own silo. Not only that, but they're also busy solving their problem and trying to resolve their issues at, an, at hand and often won't make the time uh, for you to help you with your uh, chargeback deductions issue. 
how much time does it take? If you run into a problem or a complication, communicating up and down the organization company ladder may take weeks. Um, I remember dealing with the co-op and advertising teams and the return uh, warehouses. It would take um, actually weeks, if not sometimes months, to get that information to help resolve that issue. So every day that it's outstanding, the longer your money is outstanding, the longer your DSO will be also. Um, and it could you know, go back and forth, right? Multiple follow-ups going back and forth. Did they, did they provide you the full information? Did they not provide you the full information? Whereas bots can actually go ahead and get all of the information at the, at the right at the inception instead of you having to wait back and forth. Now, many times organizations specialize around the channel, for example, Walmart processing, and then you may have one person for Amazon and one person for do, who does the FedEx and another person that may be doing advertising and so forth, right? So uh, it takes some time to get all that information uh, to just to dispute the chargeback, let alone collect on it. Robots smash fragmentation, right? A single robot can go out to a retailer site, it can pull information, it can send that information back into your accounting system, it can pull information from your ERP system, it'll match up the shipper information. If it needs to go to a FedEx or UPS, it can also do that and you know file the paperwork uh, at lightning speed and they can also interact with other departments and companies at the same time so if you need a returns uh, department that needs to be cc'd on this it can do that also so robots really clearly smash the fragmentation you can see on the right hand side they can initiate their plan do check act and move on it's a really quick process in the background number three Seasonality, uh, whether it's um, the holiday season or a new product launch that you may have, uh, but seasonality definitely comes into play. Um, question is, what percentage of people uh, in the manufacturing AR groups uh, quietly sub in the months leading up to a holiday? Uh, well, 200%, but um, all joking aside, uh, I know uh, I've worked at departments where we've had to uh, make sure that, you know, we have incentives for people to continue, uh, especially after the busy new product launch or heavy uh, holiday season, uh, having to continue to motivate them. But it can be uh, daunting for sure. Robots don't care about December, right? Or January or any month. And I mentioned earlier on, they don't care about the day. They don't take breaks. They don't take vacations. Uh, they are constantly working for you. And the benefits of hiring robots, right? Hiring costs are minimal and it's one time. You got the bot, it's in there, it's working for you consistently. Uh, they can replicate easy to deal with volume. Uh, I mentioned that earlier on scalability. So they'll go ahead and do that uh, when it's a busy time of year uh, or it's a quiet time of year. They're just constantly in the background doing the work. And you don't have to beg them to do work, like I mentioned earlier on, the companies I've worked for motivating the team. Fortunately, bots uh, don't talk back like C3PO. They can, C3PO can be annoying, uh, but they don't talk back to you. They just do the work for you. Number four is time. I mentioned this earlier on, but we're going to go into where bots are 60 times as efficient as a human. Now, how do we calculate this? Uh, by watching people perform tasks multiple times and then by automating with robots. If a, one of your highest performers, if they can process approximately 6,000 chargeback deductions a month, a robot can do that in 2.6 hours. Um, so the, the, the process power of this technology uh, is, is quite amazing. And robots really get tired, bored, resentful, bitter, angry, uh, or sad. They're um, constantly just working in the background. Number five, cost, which is very important to the CFOs, as well as I'm sure your budgets in your departments also. 
robots are one sixth the cost of people. Now, after you consider implementation costs or ongoing robot maintenance, the cost uh, can be calculated at about one sixth uh, of a person uh, doing that. Like I mentioned earlier on in the previous point, they work 60 times faster. Um, but again, um, you know, you have to have um, bots, uh, but you have to have the technology, the hardware, um, the space uh, for them to work in as well. Now, this is simply a raw robot versus an FTE. Other benefits exist as well. You know, HR issues, like I mentioned earlier on, um, and that, you know, um, no breaks and so forth. Not only that, you can keep your expenses flat. This is a quote uh, from a senior director at DNA Systems Reading. Um, we can reallocate uh, headcount now and use staff in another area that needs attention outside this world. And as we grow, we don't have to add bodies. We can make it work for us. Um, so they were able to reallocate staff and keep expenses flat, right? So now they can go and work on other areas um, that will help the organization. Um, again, repurpose resources. I did mention this. There is a case study uh, down on DNH distributory. Uh, one customer you know, says that they had up to three people who are adding value. Not that they're a cost center dealing with deductions, they are actually adding value to the organization in other areas. That's roughly 6,000 man power hours um, doing something else besides pushing paper, filing paper, filing claims, and so forth. And uh, the, the quote from them is, and they're far from done using bots and technology. By the numbers, so I mentioned cost, right? So by the numbers, um, just at a high level, um, time to organize and file a claim, 24 hours on average, right? So you have some claims that'll get done quicker, other claims that may take longer um, by, sorry, by the robots, but manually can take three to six months. Um, on the cash flow component of it, as I mentioned earlier, they keep, they get you current and they keep you current, right? So uh, we've seen companies that have been paid back using robotics technology uh, within a week. So they're filing claims, and um, you may be surprised to hear. So, you know, as Amazon is using robots to actually generate chargebacks and deductions, because I'm sure they're not going to have somebody write up a one penny chargeback or any of these non compliant chargebacks for 12 cents or 13 cents. They don't have somebody entering that into the system. It's bots doing that for them and often uh, with this one case we um, help them fight those chargeback compliances and they were getting paid back within, within weeks so not only do they have bots that are generating the chargebacks they probably have bots that are reviewing anything that you're disputing and denying and matching up side by side and if you have that paperwork submitted well the bots are paying them back as well so um, cash flow goes from three to six months to zero to one month. I mentioned this earlier on, right? Uh, retailer uh, uploads um, to process a thousand claims. Uh, it takes about 240 uh, FTE hours, whereas the bots are doing that. There is time, but the bots are doing that. So it's, it's all done in the background. Uh, and we've seen claims get uploaded in, in seconds, literally 10, 20 seconds. Uh, claims are getting uploaded um, daily and consistently. Training, often when you have changes in your processes as a result of your uh, retailers requesting changes on their website or just any other one, um, there's about uh, 200 hours approximately spent annually uh, on that, whereas the bots uh, will figure out if there's any changes on retailer portals uh, and they're able to go ahead and make sure that the correct cells are populated with the correct information. Now, the cost, uh, again, this is uh, from a customer of I members, roughly. Um, you know, they had about 80% savings uh, when they were paying uh, almost five and a quarter uh, per transaction, per claim, uh, to pennies uh, or less than a dollar.
Last but not least, there's the strategic team. Uh, and this is really important uh, of what will happen when bots uh, are gonna take over the chargeback area. Uh, what happens if there aren't any chargebacks to process? What is your team gonna do? Um, a quote uh, from a VP of credit services at the NA system. You add value immediately. Uh, it's actually the ability that we haven't had to add staff. We uh, reallocated capable folks into more valuable, more enduring paths, like the root cause analysis to help reduce the deduction. And I've seen this, so not only uh, will you be able to repurpose those resources, but now you're gonna focus in on what I call stop the bleeding, right? So it's great to have the bots working for you in the back end, as well as your teams cleaning up those deductions, but actually to spend time and add value is, is huge. Not only that, you and your team can grow, right? Um, another quote from Tony. All we were doing was plugging holes. Now, robots plug them automatically. It gives our staff the ability to figure out where those holes are coming from in the first place. So not only are they able to do that, it enhances their job um, to the company. It brings more value to them. Uh, you'll see uh, the teams being more cheerful and more engaged about problem solving. So it's adding more feathers in their cap instead of just uh, pushing paper and solving the chargeback problem. You go into new markets. Again, another quote from Tony. Um, and it allows us to engage in customer distribution that we generally try to shy away from because they are now, so because they are known for being troublesome particularly in the segment of grocery and drug stores that are incredibly difficult to deal with. When we have this kind of tool in our arsenal that allows us to engage with different customers. So basically in a nutshell, what Tony's saying is that they were resistant to go into new markets because they were scared of the volumes of deductions as they're a distributor. They're the middleman. Um, and so they're saying, well, you know, it just doesn't make sense for us to go into new markets. Now with bot technology, they're open to this idea of going in and going into different markets that they were scared of going into previously. So you can transform your team to a strategic team. Your department um, can be empowered and then going forward, uh, then just not an expense or perceived as an expense drain, right? So accounts receivable, yes, we're doing a great job collecting the money. Chargebacks, every penny that is collected back at any company, it goes to the company's bottom line. And so you can actually transform your department as well as yourself into being a strategic team for the organization, not just a cost center. Probably ask and ask me how. Super simple, three-step process, try and keep this. I'm gonna to go to the bottom yellow uh, portion first. You're constantly putting out fires, right? But you don't have uh, to let issues and fragmentation dominate your strategic vision. If you have a vision, get a demo, right? See what robotics is all about. Then assess, right? The vendors or vendors that you may have to say, does robot integration uh, make more sense and is it part of the roadmap that we have? And last but not least, right, onboard and train. And like, like I mentioned earlier on, implementation is, is weeks and often uh, the better companies that do robotic um, automation are SaaS-based companies because they're, they're using the latest technology. And not only that, they can add the next wave of technology that's going to be come, uh, coming there, coming the way uh, in the in the chargeback industry. Now, focus on the goal. There are many distractions, and you're often going around in circles. But focus on your goal, right? Um, I'm going to go through bullet at each one at a time. Focus on your department and your issues. Implement robotics to solve a specific chargeback and deduction problem. Don't try to solve your problem by 
sorry, with a larger outsourced robot, robotic process automation effort driven by a technology team that will take years to see results. I mentioned this earlier on, the CIOs are excited about this, but often their teams are worried about new technology coming in there. Uh, what's that gonna do to, to their IT footprint and so forth? And don't be fooled by all the uh, one accounts receivable packages that do everything because they really don't. They specialize in making sure that all of the information is in one place for your teams to do that work. Whereas the bots actually do the work um, in the background for you. In chargebacks and deductions processing, industry knowledge also key. Now, that comes and stems from each one of you at your company. If you have that knowledge, all that knowledge needs to be done is put into nice standard processes where the bots can take over and do the work uh, for you. Last but not least, um, the iNimbus difference, right? Um, as you know, I'm a consultant for iNimbus. Uh, I've seen them implement this technology uh, through a numerous number of, co of companies, and it is, it is mind boggling. And 10 reasons, right? Uh, first person knowledge of the credit and collection space. Number two, uh, mentioned this earlier on, they're a cloud based solution that scales with you, no growing challenges. Number three, they've already had the bot capabilities in-house for chargebacks, for deductions. There are other companies that are out there that do the accounts payable space, but iNimba specializes in the, and have it in-house. Number four, AI, artificial capabilities in-house. The systems are continually learning uh, from other companies, other distributors, other uh, suppliers um, and retailers. Five, processes which keep up with supplier and retailer portals and can pivot quickly. We mentioned about the scalability earlier on, so they're able to go ahead and scale up and down pretty quickly. Number six, uh, we have a system architect, which is best in class. Um, my understanding is that they spent their first two years building the um, system architecture to make this process as easy as possible and again geared and de designed towards chargebacks and deduction. Number seven, implementation speed is weeks and not months. And I mentioned earlier on it may take years if you're going to put a whole uh, new package on there. Uh, they've done this, I suppose they've come up with a plan that's easier to put together in weeks. I think the uh, quickest one I saw was within four weeks and the um, supplier customers up and running and getting money back in week five, week six. Number eight, pricing is a software as a service model. Um, and I'll let you guys talk to them about that. Number nine, uh, customer has a direct line into iNimbus for issues and issues that are there, you have a direct line into that. And last but not least, number 10, no cost to trial. Use the service for 30 days prior to making a payment. If you like it, move forward. If not, um, no harm, no foul. And that does conclude it. Again, thank you for your time uh, on this. And I'll, I'll turn it over to Caitlin for, for any questions. Wonderful. Thank you, Rohit, for all of your insights and techniques. Um, so now I'd like for us to address some of the questions that we have here. Um, what are the quantity of chargebacks that make ro robot implementation pay off? Now, um, it varies from uh, company to company, uh, the number of chargebacks. The, the, the quickest ones that we've seen are definitely uh, shortages, the non-compliance, uh, ones that will pay off uh, immediately. The returns, variances, MDF co-ops take a little bit longer. Uh, but the, the, the volumes, it, it really doesn't have to be a high volume so long as there is volume there. Great. Um, how long does it take to switch to robots? Um, like I mentioned earlier on, um, 
So switching to robots, uh, it depends on the appetite of the company looking at this technology. Um, if, there's a, if there's a good appetite, it can be done within weeks. And um, what I've seen is you want to try one reason code for one retailer to start with because your process for that specific reason code is going to be same for all other retailers. But try it just for one, and that takes um, a week or less. You get it set up, see how it works for that specific retailer, and then you can add on as many as needed. You can do different reason codes at a later point in time, but see how it works with one reason code for one retailer, and you'd be amazed uh, at how quickly that can be done. So do the robots replace my whole processing team? I would say no, they do not replace your whole processing team. Um, what I've seen out there is that the, the bots can actually handle north of 80% of your chargebacks and deductions. You know, for example, MDF, um, is often some gray area, right? So the bots, uh, sure they will be able to do that in time, but currently um, I would say your team, it's not gonna replace your whole team. But I mentioned earlier on that you can repurpose your team, right? It's just um, augmenting your team and, and then they're doing the work for you. So that you're just adding the bots to your team will more efficient, more faster, um, but to cover 100%, the technology is not there yet, but it does cover greater than 80% of the chargebacks that uh, typically would hit your box. Okay, what examples of manual activities in the deduction process is a robot able to do? All portal communication, internal communication? So, robots, can have the ability to go ahead and go into external uh, portals um, like the Amazon, uh, Walmart, or the world's FedEx and UPS. They're able to pull that information and, and then house it, and then they'll go ahead and work on that deduction. They'll also go ahead and pull the information from most companies' ERP systems. Bots are ag uh, agnostic to what system it's gonna come in from. They'll go ahead and pull the invoicing, the um, billing shipments, the purchase order, whatever you allow the bots to pull in. They'll go ahead and pull that information in and work that claim. They'll do the analytics for you. Then they have the ability to email whomever you want to. So you may have a list of two people or a list of 10 people that you want CC'd on. But the bots have the ability to do that. Not only do they have the ability to send emails, they have the ability to go ahead and automatically upload to, to vendor portals as well um, instantaneously. I mean, they can do that. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of time for them to pull this information and then go ahead and digest it. And then if it is a true denial, go ahead and um, upload it. There are cases where you can have the bot also push information into your ERP system to say, okay, now we're going to go ahead and issue a credit because we've done the analysis and we don't need to do that. So it will help uh, or eliminate the issuance or people manually filling out uh, credit memo or debit memo request as well. Um, can bots handle all types of chargebacks? Um, I mentioned this earlier on. Uh, whatever you, whatever process you have that is repeatable, uh, is simplified and standardized. I, I, should, I shouldn't say simplified. I said as long as it's um, standardized and it's repeatable, it uh, doesn't matter the complexity of it. Bots can handle that. Now, when there's a human intervention needed uh, to look at specific things, uh, the technology is getting better there. I mentioned uh, advertising and MDF a couple of times uh, in my experience, you know, often, you know, it has to measure the um, width of that ad and often what the content is in that ad. Um, the AI technology that's uh, out there is getting much better. 
in recognizing um, signatures, recognizing pictures, images to help solve that problem. So uh, like I mentioned earlier on, 80%, north of 80%, yes, they will be able to handle. I think within a couple of years, you're going to see that gap go down, you know, um, of that remaining 20% uh, be done down to 90 plus percent. Okay. Um, many times we only learn of a chargeback when they short pay on their remittance, not always 820. Can robots help with this? Yes. So, um, what we have often what can happen is uh, once they identify and they use the AI technology so once that chargeback is deducted uh, on that remittance it can figure out that's a chargeback and often there's a chargeback number and a reason code you can have a cross-reference table from the retailer reason code to your reason code and the bot can figure that out and say okay this is a chargeback for a shortage I need to know, I have the invoice number, I'll go ahead and pull that. So yes, it can be done. But the better way is to proactively have the robot going into a retailer portal or going into a, um, a retailer system and pulling that chargeback before the deduction is taken. We've seen instances where the bots are pulling that. If you have, say, for example, net 45 day terms and you've agreed that the Retail is not going to take that charge back until 45 days. Deductions have been resolved before they've been taken. Um, but yes, the, the robotic technology uh, can read remittances, identify what they are, and go ahead and start the reconciliation and charge back process immediately. All right, well, thank you for your questions and for attending today's seminar. A link to the on-demand version of this program will be sent to you following um, our webinar. For those of you who have further questions about the material covered in today's presentation or whose questions were not addressed in the Q&A portion, please feel free to contact Rohit Patel directly. Please also note that Rohit will be presenting at the RBCS Fall Conference, so be sure to attend, introduce yourself, and ask questions. Thank you and have a great day.